Um, good evening and welcome to the Cape Elizabeth School Board meeting Tuesday, October 14th. And if we could rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for the Um, we do have one adjustment to the agenda tonight, and that is under committee reports. Um, Kevin will give a report on hats. Um, approval of the school board minutes from last month. Is everybody okay with the school board minutes? Okay. Um, then we can move on to comments by our two high school students. I see them. Michael and Rebecca. Hi, I'm Rebecca again. Um, in the past month, the Student Council has held two full meetings and goals for the year are beginning to take shape. Most recently, we've split into committees dealing with pressing issues such as the formation of a student drinking policy written by the SAC, the creation of school enhancing committees that will ch take charge of inviting public speakers to campus, or staging landscaping type school beautification projects, another community focused on academic initiatives, and another to brainstorm ideas for carrying through Mr. Shedd's theme of respect through the year. Besides this sampling of committees, the SIC discussed school crowding, and they hoped that I would convey the problem to the school board. A handful of teachers are forced to rotate classrooms and use carts to carry their materials around. This not only makes it difficult for the teachers, but also for the students seeking help after class because they never know where to find their teacher. We hope that the school board and town council fully explore all options for creating a rapid solution to this problem. And the SAC is pleased that action is being taken and that the referendum will be discussed at the public hearing tomorrow. The SAC also conferred about taking a stand on the question that will be posed November 4th but realized this would violate our mission to represent all high school students because there's no way we could dem democratically do that without our own school-wide vote. And instead, therefore, we decided that individuals would be better off taking their own initiatives and supporting their feelings concerning the referendum. In other news, the sports teams are raring towards the postseason contests, all of which should be very exciting. Our homecoming went off without a hitch and all involved seemed to have a great time. The relay races outside on the track were especially creative and very amusing to watch. There are theater auditions right now, which I need to run to. And the quarter closes on October 31st, and the Student Advisory Council wishes you a happy Halloween and successful election. I'm Michael Iris, also a high school representative. As you all well know, two weeks ago, there was a homecoming, and it went fairly well. We, uh, had activities all through the week, such as hall decorations, relay races, pie eating contests, and uh, tug of war contests. And uh, many of the teams that played on Saturday came out well, except for a few postpone uh, postponations uh, due to the weather. Um, the uh, girls soccer team has a fairly good record. The uh, cross country team has done exceptionally well and won a came in third in a meet in Manchester. Um, uh, jazz band is uh, starting up on October 20th, and the golf, uh, golf team won states. So, the uh, team states, not the individual states. Uh, as Rebecca said, the SAC formed into several committees. These are the Activities Climate C Committee, the Conduct Committee, the Volunteer Committee, the Respect Committee, the Academic Committee, the Cafeteria Committee, and the Substance Committee. These committees will uh, deal with uh, the issues at hand that uh, students bring up to them. I'm currently on the conduct committee, which will be working to create a uh, established dress code policy. Also, seniors are, uh, are heavy into uh, college work, and uh, it's reported that a third of them will be taking early decision or early action this year. So, Got a lot of work to do. Okay. Um, are there any questions or comments for Rebecca? Or comment um, relative to uh, Rebecca's comments on the overcrowding at the school. Take this opportunity to remind the student body that students who are 18 or over, as of the date of the referendum, can and should, I hope, will vote. 
in that referendum, as well as the other questions that will be on the ballot. <coughs> okay, thank you. And now we have um, two middle school students. And if the two of you would introduce yourselves in the beginning. I'm Kevin Johnson, and I'm in eighth grade. My name is Nora Daly, and I'm in seventh grade, and we're the school board rep. Um, this year on our student council, Carly Riker is our president, and the two co-vice presidents are John Bass and Sierra Rintel. We've only had two full meetings, but we've discussed the first dance on Friday, and also the seventh graders just came back from a great week at Kiev. This dance that's coming up on Friday is we're having a Halloween theming, and we're allowing the high school to sell refreshments to raise money for a school in India. Another decision our student council has made is to support the Salvation Army and adopt a family where we buy them presents and a feast for Christmas. Is there any questions? Any questions for Kevin or Nora? No. Well, thank you, and we look forward to hearing from you every month this year. We'll move on to communications. Um, a couple items that are in your in your packet. Um, I would just like to make make note of the NEASC um, progress report um, that has to do with some of the from New England Association accreditation issues, um, and also. Uh, there is a copy of the uh, Maine School Boards Association's proposed resolutions. Um, any, I, anything you would like to uh, have input into those resolutions? And Kevin is the representatives at the, the state conference this year. Uh, I suggest you give those, any of those suggestions or anything you would like him to speak about um, at that meeting. Uh, there are some important resolutions, one having to do with essential programs and services. Um, and there are also, um, with consolidation and unifications, you've been hearing an awful lot about that uh, throughout the state, and it's a resolution on that, and there's also a resolution that has to do with the No Child Left Behind Act. So any input you would like to, to have with that, uh, just contact Kevin. I'm sure he'll bring it up at the meeting. Um, and I would also like to mention that last month I read a letter um, from a concerned parent about the driving and traffic conditions at the high school. And I would like everyone to um, know that the town um, does have a traffic study underway. Actually, the Century just had an article um, in their newspaper about it. Um, the town council will have a workshop um, on this issue sometime before the end of the year. So we're looking at, um, by the end of the year, this situation to um, be addressed. Um, and next we can move on to comments from the public. And we have Councillor um, Kayata here tonight who would like to um, discuss the uh, question one on um, the vote in November. Um, so she will tell us what she's learned in Augusta. Okay, thank you very much, mm -hmm. Chairman. Um, as you said, my name is Ann Swift Kayata. I live at 14 Stonebridge Road. I'm here as a resident of Cape Elizabeth to urge my fellow citizens to look carefully at the impact of the various property tax reform referendum questions um, as we all cast our ballots in November. The November state referendum question number one has to do with property tax reform and state funding for local education. Whatever the voters of Maine decide on that question will have a huge, and I mean huge, impact on CAPE's future revenues that we receive as state aid for education, and that's also known as GPA or state subsidy. I've passed out some handouts that you have before you um, that lay out specifically for Cape Elizabeth the dollar impacts of each vote. Um, there's also some in further information in there about uh, 1A and 1B and some information that shows the financial impacts for towns all over Cumberland County. 
um, basically under 1A, which is the citizens initiative that it was put on the ballot by uh, 100,000 people signing um, a petition last November. Cape Elizabeth's, uh, under 1A, Cape Elizabeth's state aid for education would increase by over $2.6 million more than it is today. State funding for education next year would be at 55% statewide under 1A, fulfilling a promise the state legislature made 19 years ago to support local education at that level. Under 1B, which is the governor's and the legislature's competing measure, Cape Elizabeth's state aid next year would drop by five to $700,000 from this year's level. And under 1C, which is the option, whenever you have two different options for a question, there is a third option, which is none of the above. 1C, a vote for 1C means keep the current GPA system. Under 1C, CAPE's state aid, our revenues would also drop five to $700,000 next year. This five to $700,000 drop in our state funding would have to be made up by budget cuts, or increased property taxes, or a combination of both. I personally think the choice is clear. Cape citizens supportive of education um, have a very distinct difference uh, in front of them. Cuts of 500 to $700,000 next year if 1B or 1C passes statewide, or an increase of $2.6 million for Cape Elizabeth under 1A. 1A is supported by the Maine Education Association, which is a partner in the initiative. It is supported by the Maine School Superintendents Association, the Maine School Boards Association, the Maine Principals Association, and the Maine Congress of Parents and Teachers, which is sort of the statewide Maine P PTA. And it's supported by all those organizations because 1A supports local school systems. I will be voting for 1A in November because it will increase state support for Cape Elizabeth schools, as well as providing significant property tax reform for Cape citizens. So I urge every, all of you here tonight and everyone watching to become informed on these questions and to think very carefully about the impact it will have on us in our town. I have one last note. Mike McGovern, our town manager, is going to be presenting to the town council tomorrow night a, his, his quarterly financial update that he does periodically, which will review the state of town finances and the various pressures and issues facing the municipality and the schools. I urge you and citizens to either attend or to watch on TV on Channel 3. And I thank you very much for your time. And if you have any questions about the materials I've, I've given you, I'd be happy to answer them um, whenever. You, you know where I am. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ann. Marie, haven't we taken a stand on supporting 1A? Yeah, just so that um, the public is aware, um, and, and I was asked to put together an article which will be in the Courier, and um, Ann is, 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 is right on target with, with her comments. Um, the school board discussed at their last, um, not this week, this month, but the last finance committee, the, the three uh, questions, 1A, 1B, and 1C. And it's our feeling that uh, we would benefit um, undoubtedly by uh, question 1A, which does bring in a significant amount of money. Um, through question 1B, we do lose. We continue to lose by doing nothing. Um, and it's been, a, it's been a problem for as long as I've been in Cape Elizabeth, and, and, and we just have, have not had the funding uh, for our schools. Um, so question 1A does force the issue. It forces the legislature um, to come up with the funds to, in all districts, it's not just Cape Elizabeth, in my reading of it and looking at all of towns, and I noticed that Ann has some samples in here from other towns, everyone gains uh, in, in those communities from, from question 1A. Um, and in the other, the 1B or the, the 1C, there are losers and there are gainers, uh, as it always has been. Um, but at least with 1A, everyone seems to gain. Are there any other comments, Kevin? I'd like to point out in support of Ann's comments, 
that the governor's proposal uses two very interesting terms the first term that it's used throughout the beginning of the proposal is targets this state has never met the target and i just want to reiterate again that there is nothing in this legislation that forces the state to meet a target it's moving and my best guess is once again 20 years from now we will be saying they never got to the target the other term that they use which i think is delightful is the term caps in terms of town and school spending so while they re reserve the flexibility of target they mandate caps for localities uh, therefore taking away local control of education and municipal business so I just uh, thought that I would highlight that. I would like to say also, for the record, I will be voting for 1A, and I urge all of you who are here and listening to vote for 1A. It will force the state to take care of business. Okay. <coughs> Any other school board members? No. no. Okay. Then I will just reiterate that this school board stands for 1A. Um, and now we move on to recognition for Keith Wakem. Yeah. Uh, Keith Wakem um, has left the school district and he has taken a position um, in the same field but a little bit different um, in working for a company that we uh, do business with. Um, but we did want to take a moment this evening. Keith was unable to be here um, and we will present him with a certificate um, in recognition of our appreciation for the work that, that he has done uh, for the school district. Um, keeping the buildings clean um, and organizing the custodial crew um, with all the different org organizations that use our schools um, and with the, between the parent organizations and um, the school itself and the different clubs, it's, it's a big job. And I really think that a lot of what we were able to do and accomplish was is due to, to Keith's leadership. And I'm, I'm hoping um, that will continue. But Keith did an outstanding job. So we did want to present him with a certificate. And I'll just read that. And it will be presented at a later time um, that the Cape Elizabeth School Board presents this award for recognition for outstanding service to Keith Wakeham in recognition of your five years of dedicated service to the Cape Elizabeth School community as a custodial supervisor. An appreciation for the Cape Elizabeth School Board signed Marie Prager and Thomas Frisella. Okay, thank you. And now we can move on to the superintendent's report. Uh, the first item I'd like to um, discuss, the, the referendum, obviously one of the items on the referendum has been discussed already, um, but they're also with regard to the building projects, just so for your information uh, and for the, for the public to know, um, that a special issue of The View, which is our school district newspaper, um, will be going out to all homes in the community. And we decided to um, publish our information and the facts and uh, architectural drawings um, because we felt it was important to inform the public uh, with regard to the, to the building projects. Um, we chose the format of using the view just because it's inexpensive. Uh, it is our, our vehicle for communicating with the public rather than put out an expensive glossy brochure. We felt that we could use the view, uh, which we would publish anyway, and still get the same information out to the public. So I urge you um, to take a look at that. If you have questions about the building project, please feel free in that, in that uh, issue of the view school board members are all listed with their phone numbers and myself at the school department so that if you do have questions please feel free to call uh, to make sure I think you have accurate information before going to the polls. Uh, we will also have post in in the town hall um, at the public library and at community services we will have large um, uh, poster board type drawings of the work that's to be done in the schools, where the renovations will be taking place at the high school, and what the architectural rendering and floor plan of the addition to Pond Cove will be. So those will be in those three areas. 
take a look at those drawings if you have questions again ask us if anyone would like a tour of any of the facilities to help clarify in your mind what areas of the building we might be talking about where an addition is supposed to go all of those things please call the superintendent's office and we'll arrange for for someone to take you around the buildings and really get a first hand look at what we're talking about in the two referendum questions that we have we have had several forums recently and we also you know there is also a citizens group that's very active in this project that I'm sure will also supply you with information it's an important vote for the future of our schools so I urge you to be informed before you go to the polls also on my report just quickly our October and November workshops in talking to Marie we felt it would be best to hold off usually in October we begin our budget process and begin talking about budget budget priorities obviously the the result of the referendum in November will have a huge impact on what our priorities are for instance if the high school project does not pass we will need to significantly increase the amount of money that we spend in our capital improvements some of those issues at the high school are not going to go away and we need to begin to address some of those in our budget so to hold a budget session on what our priorities would be doesn't make a lot of sense for October the same holds true for Pond Cove if that issue does not pass then we will be looking at a significant amount of money that will be be spending on portable trailers for the for Pond Cove so all those issues are important and we'll know a lot more after the referendum so our budget priority workshop will be in November in October we will Jeff shed will be sharing with us information about the upcoming accreditation visit at the high school our school board meeting date November 11th is Veterans Day and it is a Tuesday my suggestion is that we hold our November meeting on that Wednesday November 12th we always run into a bit of trouble in November due to Thanksgiving and so in order to get a workshop in if we were to just go to the next Tuesday have the ability to get a workshop in so the only way we can get a board meeting and a workshop in is if we go to Wednesday the 12th and the council chambers I believe are available on that day and in your packet lastly you have copies of the latest we just received MEA test results at our next board meeting the principals will be prepared to share their feelings and feedback on those MEA results but I did want you to get copies of them before they're written they're distributed to the newspapers so that you could get a look at them prior to that but I have not asked the principals to discuss them this evening and would hold that off to our next meeting once they've had a chance to digest them that's it now we can move on to the principals reports Jeff in the high school let me make a couple comments about homecoming we changed homecoming last year and we changed it again this year we did a lot more things this year during the school day um, similar to what we had done in what we called Winterfest in the wintertime because Winterfest had been received really favorably by the school staff and by the students of the school so homecoming was a lot of fun and on Friday afternoon of homecoming I think it was October 3rd we took about well it was supposed to be an hour but it turned out actually to be about an hour and a half outside and did the relay and some other events highlights of homecoming were for me Thursday night at the Community Services Building there were 64 student and faculty participants in the first annual no money involved poker competition <laughs> coordinated by seniors Justin Unger and Scott Karras who did an <laughs> awful lot of work and I'm glad to report publicly that the winners of the poker competition were not as Justin and Scott expected Justin and Scott. <laughs> they were uh, sophomores, Kyle Dankos and 
Nate Gray. I'm also proud to report that the staff had a strong representation. Keith Weatherby, known as Moneymaker, came in third place in the poker competition. So it seemed to end, there were a number of people who were observing that, so I'm guessing there were about 80 people involved uh, at the community services building, and at the same time in the high school, we had about 100 students involved in decorating the hallways of the school, which was really cool. Um, and they did a great job, and I'm also pleased to report that, that the next afternoon, Friday afternoon, they cleaned up the school, which was great. Um, we had a surreal, slow motion, highly tactical, odd capture the flag event on Friday afternoon that involved, I'm estimating, about 200 students all at once playing capture the flag. I'm not sure who won. I'm not sure anybody knows who won but it was kind of a fun event. I am proud to report that the co-ed tug of war competition was won to everybody's surprise, including the staff's surprise, by the staff who <laughs> beat the seniors. I'm less proud to report that the staff did not win the blindfolded baby, eat baby food eating competition. That was won by the seniors who bought the baby food and they bought for themselves applesauce to eat while Mike O'Brien, one of our new science teachers, was struggling, and it was quite a sight to get through split peas. <laughs> he didn't make it. Not Did not make it. It was fun. It was a good community <coughs> event, and the kids liked it, and um, it, was, it, was, it was a lot of fun. Um, Tom, uh, Tom has given to you the copy, on a more serious note, copy of the... Um, letter from NEASC asking for a progress report, which you also have a copy of in your school board packet. I don't have yet a response to my special progress report, but our NEASC steering committee, New England Association of Schools and Colleges faculty staff steering committee, um, actually held a conference call last week with Janet Allison, who is our NEASC liaison staff person. So she will be working with us. In fact, she's going to be visiting the high school in December. We had a preliminary conference call with Janet Allison, and one of the questions I asked to Janet, because she's very much aware, and she's very much aware of things that have been going on with the various progress reports and the work, especially related to ADA accessibility issues at the high school. Um, she is probably at least as aware of that as I am, which really surprises me. She remembers the various reports that have gone on over the course of the years. And I asked Janet, what would the consequence be um, when the visiting committee comes in March of 2005, I think that date is right, um, if the referendum fails? And Janet's response is, Jeff was, Jeff, you've got it wrong. Um, if the referendum fails, then the response of NEASC, the New England Association of Schools and Colleges, um, to the failure of the referendum will not wait until November, until the visiting committee comes. It will be a much prompt, prompter response. She didn't say what it would be, uh, but she said certainly that there would be a definite response from the New England Association of Schools and College to, the, to our failure in ability to address the ADA accessibility issues at the high school. One of the things I try to do from time to time is to mention some ex instructional issues, um, and I think it would be an interesting thing for the school board to hear at some point from the foreign language department, of whom David Peary is here today, about a new technique of teaching foreign language, particularly in their level one and level two classes, called total physical response storytelling. Um, there's a tremendous amount of documentation and research and things that shows that kids using this total physical response storytelling um, have tremendous results in terms of their actual retention of the language and their ability to actually speak the language as opposed to give right answers on tests, um, which is what the traditional method does. Um, so several of our teachers went this summer um, to a total physical response storytelling training, um, and I think that all of the ones who went are using um, total physical response storytelling, piloting it in at least one of the sections that they teach this year. And the kids' response has been very, very positive. Um, on the subject of learning results, I'm told by Elaine Brownell, the chairman of the math department, that our first common assessment that ninth graders will be experiencing will be 
happening by the end of this month. It happens at different times in different classes depending on um, depending on the particular class, particular section. They're not required to happen simultaneously, but the first sort of wave of common assessments is going to uh, be experienced by the ninth graders at the end, by the end of this month. So that's, and that's regardless of what the state does, because as you know, we're not going to know until sometime after January when the legislature next meets, what if anything it does with the commissioner's recommendation to delay the learning results for another year. That's my report. Any questions? I, I'd just say that I know some Spanish just going to the open house and learn, and watching the physical, whatever it's called. <laughs> TPRS. Right. <laughs> just in the 10 minute uh, rendition of this is what I do now. Um, it was very interesting how many of us walked away <laughs> knowing <laughs> some Spanish. So it was great. And right. I think the kids have a lot of fun with it. Great. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Jeff. Middle school, Nancy. Good evening. Uh, first, a uh, curriculum update just on our outdoor experience. We have <coughs> started with that, um, the sixth grade, in a, our uh, less noticeable way because they gradually build up to some Chewankee experiences in May, but already in homeroom guidance, anything that they do there actually leads them towards that goal um, that comes in the spring. But our fifth grade has done their first trimester work at Kettle Cove doing some things with tidal waters and also doing some um, group building activities, um, and they did that in early October. Last week, our eighth grade worked on their first community service project. They worked as part of beach cleanup and um, worked with public works and, in fact, helped them a great deal. We were told that the work that the eighth graders do actually helps us with our response to storm drainage runoff um, because they do participate in the beach cleanup. And they went out last Wednesday and Thursday. Advisory groups would go out for either the morning or the afternoon, and they did that work. So we were grateful for them to do that. And they really do seem to be more thoroughly understanding that idea of giving back to a community. Also, last week, we had a very successful trip, as Nora already shared with you, to Kiev. And the weather was absolutely perfect and wonderful. We had a nice um, out showing of parents who came for Wednesday, the workshop that's called Learning Together. And in fact, Kiev has revised the Learning Together workshop. I know some of you have been there in the past, um, but this time they have revised it to more closely align with the experience the students are having and also with a focus on goal setting and how you can take some of the Kiev activities back to family activities. So that was very successful. Also, we have, this is our sixth year at Kiev, and they know that we, they have always known that this is part of a four-year experience. Sometimes when you're working with partners, it takes a while for them to feel comfortable with certain parts of your program. Two of the groups that we work with um, in our outdoor experience program are hard and true competitors, and that would be Camp Kiev and Chewankee. Chewankee has also always had an easier time talking about Kiev is coming up and some of these things you might do. For whatever reason, um, that was more difficult for Kiev, but this year they really bought right into that too. And we said, we know you went to Chewankee in the sixth grade and in the spring, and here are some of the things, tell us some of the things you did. And they incorporated into the lessons so that once again, it's not just assumptive that the students will understand how all of this is connected. We now have not only our own advisors, but our providers who are working with us who are feeling much more comfortable talking about that they are part of a four-year experience. Um, so hopefully over the next several years that will even get stronger um, so that our students in grades five through eight will see how it is all connected, or at least how the adults think it might be connected. And being wonderful middle school students, they'll correct us when we have the connections wrong and um, help us improve our work. So we look forward to that. Last week, we also had our first meeting of our speech and debate team. They're just getting organized and starting. And this is a group that um, the budget has supported through co-curricular fees now for a number of years. And we've always had a, a good showing. Uh, we had a spectacular showing last week. We had 25 students came out for our first meeting, and the seventh graders weren't even there. Um, so this is really great. Unfortunately for us, one of the things that happens, the only school that has really been able to consistently field the team to compete with us is Freeport Middle School. Their team is, size, is quite a bit smaller 
being four to six people than ours. So um, sometimes it's a little bit of a inter-squad event, but um, we're trying to work on that and entice some more schools to come out. But I know um, both Alan Leishness, who's a parent volunteer who does our debate for us, and Margaret Welch, our speech advisor, were just absolutely thrilled that such a large number of students came out. The other wonderful thing about speech and debate is the other people who always help us are some of the students from the high school who are on their speech and debate teams. And we are now working with students who started in the middle school and are now at the high school. So that's just a wonderful, natural, real connection that our students have student to student and school to school and an activity that they like to investigate and try out and then find out they can even perfect their skills when they get to high school. We have, seeing Ann up there, we have um, started on our plans for the Wonder Years with um, Ann Belden as our chair of our committee again. So we are looking forward to that and we do have a date March 5th. So if any of you are available anytime on March 5th and you'd like to drop by the middle school, I can guarantee you that it will be a wonderful day of learning together. We also, this time, we are able to put in a snow date of March 12th. We might not be able to have exactly the same program as if we went with March 5th, but we're hoping for good weather on March 5th, so we won't have to worry about that. And one of the things in the calendar you supported this year is a building flex day, where each one of the buildings gets to choose a day where that building will come together and work on a project. This is a day that will not interfere with any student attendance days, as you well know, or any other professional development day scheduled. It's a day, it could be a couple of afternoons, a couple of evenings, a Saturday, a vacation day, whatever. Um, and our school went through a process to select that date first, and they, the school selected through a consensus process to have it be the last, the, the day in June after the last student day. Considering it's a weekday, if it's the last student day is a Friday, then our building flex day will be Monday. So that was one process. Our next step is now to figure out the focus. And a great thing happened at our team leaders meeting a couple weeks ago in that the eighth grade members um, came to the team leaders meeting and suggested that we use a process they were using in some of their advisory classes to help identify issues common to middle school students. They had received an email from a middle school student in Hawaii who asked them to participate in this. And they said it worked out so well with the students for just general community issues. Um, which, by the way, one of the biggest community issues for our students is the rock. Um, they chose that as a, a community concern. And we said we could use a variation of that to maybe get some student input on what do we think some of the issues are at the middle school so that when we choose the topic for our building flex day, we are hoping for some consensus between the student selected issue and the, peer, and the teacher staff um, selected issue. We think that's probably going to happen because just the way schools go and human organizations go, that usually does happen. But what they are doing over these next couple of weeks, most of the grade levels worked on this last week, the seventh grade will work on it this week, is through homeroom guidance or advisory time, really go through what are the three issues that concern you at the middle school. This information will inform us for our building flex day. It will inform us for other topics that we can have for grade levels. It will help us work things into our homeroom guidance program and an advisory program. And it may inform us of some things to look for for our Wonder Years program as well too. So um, it was great. And it was great that that idea came from teachers that they brought it that, you know, here we are, we're going to have this day, but let's make sure it's something that will be of value to the students as well too. It is not planned that the students will be in attendance that day. We just wanted to be sure we were building and gathering information and skills about something that they also thought was of concern. As I think it was Kevin, it might have been Nora, um, shared with you, we do have our first dance coming up this Friday. That's always exciting, especially for our seventh graders because this is the first time they've attended. And this year we have changed the dances a little bit. They're going to be from 7 to 9. And we also have a group of people who will be at every dance uh, for faculty chaperones. And that's to be sure we have some consistency. And then plus we have other faculty chaperones that will be there as well too. In fact, parents are always match us person for person. So I think it will be a very well chaperoned evening as our permanent team has six members on it uh, with three additional members. So from faculty and staff, we'll have all of those and plus we'll have that many parents as well. Um, I still think there'll be plenty of time for students to have fun though and an enjoyable evening. So we look forward to that. And 
I think just we're looking forward to, I know the teachers are looking forward to family conferences coming up and getting to see everyone and sit down and talk about things so far and hopes and plans for the rest of the year. Thank you. Any questions or comments for Nancy? Thank you, Nancy. Now we'll move on to Pond Cove. Tom? Good evening. Uh, Tom mentioned that you have the uh, MEA, MEA results in your packet. We're not going to do any detail analysis tonight. But I think you may have seen the article about high-performing MEA schools, um, fourth grade in the Press Herald a few weeks ago, and my reaction to it in the Courier last week. So just generally, I'd like to say we, have, we now have both sets of results back from last December and last March. Um, and also to warn you that this year we're only going to have one set of MEAs. So when you look at across the board in Pond Cove, we tend to do very well across the board. Um, again, my first take on it is in math, we have a very high number of kids. It's way above the state average meeting or exceeding the standard. And that's probably the result of having an organized curriculum, K through six, everyday math. I can't prove it, but I think it's the case. I also noticed that uh, the number of students in fourth grade exceeding the standards uh, doubled to 11% this year, which is very high. And I think that's a credit to the teachers uh, who were able to use a program like Everyday Math, but differentiate instruction, as we say now. And that, that was a big rise. Um, the one I can't explain is that um, science just sort of sits there. We, I think we have 12% of the kids meeting or exceeding the standards in science. And that's about double, that's twice as high as the state average. So we have 80% of the kids not meeting the standards. We were just talking about that at team meetings today. We, we look at the, the questions. We're pretty sure we're covering that. We have the FOSS in place for the uh, backbone of our program, but we're sort of stuck. It may be the result of having a paper and pencil test. I'm not sure. Um, I also realize that you, I don't know if you've seen copies of these items ever on the fourth grade. Have you ever seen copies of the questions? They're, they're for public release, and I brought you copies to look at. No answers. So th this is the uh, ones for all the major subjects from last year. If, if you're that interested, I'm sure we could make copies, but at least you can see the format and some of the content. Closer to what we're actually uh, doing at school, Jeff has mentioned uh, the high school is now getting involved with doing a common assessment. We've done the same thing with uh, trying to certify assessments, particularly in math and reading. The, uh, the DRA or developmental reading assessment is just about done. Uh, the ones that we have is almost as good as DRA in grades three and four is almost complete too. The new wrinkle in that this year is that uh, Roger Rio, the high school math teacher, has offered his assistance in helping us crunch the data. Once we have it, uh, it's been very difficult for us to look at patterns and trends. We have to sit there with a paper and pencil and make guesses. So Roger has offered to help us with that. And if we can do it, we're doing a common writing prompt in grades two, three, and four, similar to the MEA, but we think a little better, within the next week. And if we can get those results over to Roger, he'll either snicker at us or help us get those down too. So that would be, that would be something new and I think helpful for us to do. Um, I'd also like to mention, speaking of data gathering, uh, with the financial assistance of the Educational Foundation, the uh, three reading teachers at Pond Cove, Becky Swift, Suzanne Hamilton, Deborah Jordan Pearson, I think I mentioned last week, were able to set up what they called a literacy institute for kids uh, in grades second and third who need a, an extra boost over the summer. They did kind of a, um, a data gathering before and after show, to show the efficacy of an intervention like that over the summer of kids not only not losing ground but gaining ground in their reading and writing. Uh, and it's, it's very dramatic. So we want to thank the uh, foundation for providing us with that opportunity. I also want to thank for the reading teachers for backing it up with some good research. I hope to talk about this further with you because it might be something we want to institute at Pond Cove. Nancy's mentioned uh, professional development and flex time. I just want to keep you, uh, I guess, with monthly updates, progress reports on the teacher leader position that Kelly Hassan is filling. I think it's a combination of the position, uh, the Pond Cove, Pond Cove teachers' high-level professionalism. Kelly's working every day with teachers in the classroom um, at 
uh, team meetings before school, after school. We even, as a little experiment, tried uh, providing lunch for people to watch uh, video of reading techniques, and people came and discussed that. This is the kind of professional development that's done in the classroom in the school that relates re really well to where the district is going. I, I can't say enough about it. We're still feeling our way. Kelly's keeping a journal. Uh, people have been very helpful, and it's, it's just been great. I'm also learning a heck of a lot about maintenance and traffic, but that's the way it goes. So it, it's been a, been a good thing to do, I think. The Yankee fans always laugh at these things, you know. <laughs> I was going to ask you, you probably know. I left, it was 4-1. to one. I don't know what the final was. It was 4-2 to two in the bottom of the ninth, and Rivera was in, and I walked away. <laughs> I, I'm saying go Marlins at this point. <laughs> Any questions? I had a comment. I just wanted to echo your surprise at the, the MEA science results. I've volunteered so many times in yep. Cove classrooms where they're doing science, and I recently was in my daughter's third grade class where they were in pairs dissecting owl pellets. And I mean, it was an amazing yeah. science experience for those kids. I learned something. I didn't know what was inside owl pellets. And, and then they categorized the <laughs> Do pellets. you want to know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just a really, yeah. I think, a really impressive science program. And I can't you know, imagine why, you know, it, why it, the test results would be. Yeah, it, it's a strong program. And because of the learning results, teachers have done many lessons and shorter units to cover. I mean, we still have a way to go. and. All I can say is we're better than a lot of other schools, but 80% not yeah, meeting. Yeah, it's just, it's a very exciting science program, so. Yep. Thanks. Okay. Thank you, Tom. Now we can move on to committee reports. Um, the finance subcommittee, Elaine. Uh, yes, um, the finance uh, committee met prior to this evening's meeting. Um, there were warrants to be signed and uh, reviews of the appropriation report. We did have a discussion um, of the upcoming referendum questions 1A, B, and C. Um, but we also put on hold a report from the athletic uh, department and for the annual financial report from our boosters, and we anticipate having that for November's finance meeting. Okay, thank you. Policy subcommittee, Jennifer? Um, we met last Tuesday um, at noon, and it was sort of our first, well, it was our first meeting, sort of an organizational meeting. We reviewed what we had done last year, what we want to do this year, and um, uh, our next meeting will be November 4th at noon in the Jordan Conference Room. Um, and the building committee, um, there really is no news from the building committee other than I will just re-emphasize um, how important this vote is on November 4th for both <coughs> of our school building projects um, and how important it is to the future of our schools. Um, if there is anyone that needs any information or doesn't understand anything about either one of these projects, as Tom said earlier, please call me or any of the school board members or the superintendent's office. Um, and lastly, the paths report. Kevin? Thank you. Um, on September 25th, uh, we held the first meeting of the General Advisory Committee for Portland Arts and Technical High School. Um, one of the biggest events is the fact that the entire administration changed as a result of retirements last year, so it makes life a little interesting. Uh, we are starting in the budget process and being sensitive to the fact that we require commitments, when I say we, I mean pass, require individual school board commitments before the individual school boards put their own budgets to bed. We are shooting for no new programs this year and a 0% increase in the Part 2 assessment, which is new equipment and supplies and things like that. Um, that's not meant to be a hint to anybody else, but we believe that that is uh, the most appropriate way to be respectful to our sending districts. Uh, the Budget Committee will begin meeting this Thursday, and I will report back periodically on how that's going. I don't think that our assessment, our total assessment for Cape Elizabeth will be substantially different from last year. 
Another question that has come up repeatedly uh, over my seven years working with PASS has been, what about academics? Um, different schools, sending schools have different motivations for wanting PASS to handle academics, either for some of the students or for all of the students that they send. Uh, a lot of it is scheduling issues, but there are other issues as well. Um, and we have formed a committee this year to look into that topic. Um, our biggest single problem is that there is not one inch of space in the past campus to implement um, an academic program in that building. Um, but we have formed a committee. Bob Hassan, who is superintendent of SAD 51, is chairing that committee. Uh, Sharon Merrill is serving on that committee. I am serving on that committee. And we will be meeting uh, on Halloween. That should be interesting. Um, that's, that's pretty much it. We've also formed a committee, uh, an overall committee, on how to better serve the needs of past students in, in a very global fashion, not just limited to academics. And we will be, those of us on the committee, will be going back to individual school districts asking for input from principals, guidance counselors, other interested parties. And we also hope to be able to interview students because we suspect that the students already have the answers to the question. Uh, that's pretty much it for PASS. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Um, we have no unfinished business, so we'll move on to new business. Um, and the first thing on our list is the superintendent's recommendations for athletic fee positions for fall. Uh, you have in front of you a list of um, athletic fee positions um, returning um, as, um, as amended, and also new high school coaching recommendation from Michael S. Bartley, uh, diving coach. Um, and I recommend uh, the list that's in front of you for approval. Okay. Do we have a motion? Jennifer? I move that we accept the superintendent's recommendation for uh, fall or coaching, winter coaching positions. Okay. A second? Anne? Um, any comments or questions? All those in favor? Five, zero. Um, you also have in front of you a list of co-curricular uh, fee stipend positions um, at the high school, um, and I would recommend approval of those positions um, for the school year at the high school. Okay. Do we have a motion, Kevin? I move that we accept the superintendent's recommendations for co-curricular fee positions. Okay. Second. Elaine? Great. Yes. There's a recommendation for SAT view for Dwayne Ely. It actually should be SAC, which is the student government. Okay. Oh. Okay. <laughs> okay, thank you, Jeff. But the other ones are the SAT members, right? The other ones okay. are Did we, we had a second? Yes, second. Okay. Um, any other comments, questions? All those in favor? Five, zero. Next on our list, um, request from uh, David Perry, French teacher, regarding a trip um, during this current school year. such an endeavor, um, and I'll avoid, avoid any cryptic jokes about the whole procedure. Um, you've received my letter, or my information packet. Um, we are trying once again to organize an exchange trip with uh, the Lycée um, uh, Aristide in Saint-Nazaire, France. It's at the mouth of the Loire River. Uh, this is a school we had an exchange with four years ago. Some of you were on the board at that time, and mm -hmm. some of you have been here for my yearly per plea for permission to go. And um, this year, I think we're going to be able to do it, um, barring world events. Um, I've 
I've been in contact with my counterpart in France, and he's met with parents, and he has quite a bit of interest in that side. Um, the principal of his high school is very much in favor of the program, so we are really starting um, very early by French standards. Um, normally, <laughs> normally it's November, I'm saying. Now, come on. This isn't is <laughs> televised on. over there. <laughs> come on. Um, uh, well, they, they come over in April, so sometimes the feeling of, of urgency is perhaps a little less than ours in trying to get this all together. Um, uh, but he's very supportive. Um, he's all set to come in April. Um, their April vacation or spring vacation is April 3rd through the 19th. Um, that would probably be about the time when they would be coming here. Um, they have requested that we not arrive in Saint-Nazaire before the 16th of February, so I'm looking to possibly leave around the 12th, spend three or four days in Paris, and then train down to Saint-Nazaire, looking to come back here. Right now I'm looking at March 1st. Um, the size of my group will depend on the size of group they come with. They're looking at 10 to 12 people, so that seems like a very, very manageable number. From the classes I've spoken to so far, not having had a trip in a few years, there's a, a pent-up demand, and there are a lot of students who are very interested in going. So we'll, I'll have a parent, with your permission, I will have a, a parent-student uh, meeting uh, at the end of the month and get a better gauge as to who's really interested. I would like permission at this point to start organization. I would like permission also to take a deposit so that at your next meeting in November, should you be so kind to grant me permission to go, I would have a deposit in hand that I could immediately send on to Promotour, the um, Canadian travel agency, which will be facilitating our trip just so we can lock in fares. It, it, this parent um, parent student meeting that you're having, that's when you will know how many students you have? Uh, at that point, I'll see who's really serious, um, and I'll ask for deposits. And once people come forward with deposits, then I really know who's serious. At that point, I would um, select students to participate. The protocol for, accept, for selecting students is uh, seniors and upper-level courses. So seniors who are in French 5 and French 6 would have priority over sophomores in French 3. And, and you're looking for permission from us At this tonight. point, I'm, I'm looking for Going. permission to start the organization, um, to uh, start this process, to meet with parents and students, uh, to collect a deposit, give you time to think about this, time for community input, for you to take a vote on this in November, um, yay or nay at which point I would go full speed ahead. Okay. Um, are there questions or comments from many members of the board? Yeah, quick question, David. What has happened in the past years that it hasn't flown? Was it just lack of interest on the kids? 9-11. Um, I'm sorry, what? 9-11, right. two years ago. Right. And um, year. the impending invasion of Iraq oh, that's right. had that's right. the French very nervous. Right. So. I couldn't remember what happened last year, so. And the fee of 1700 that it's in your letter, is that just an individual, each family pays for that yes. themselves? Yes, yes. There's no fundraising around that? Or? Going back many years of this, we found that fundraising efforts, um, for what little they really contribute to knock down the price of the trip, people have felt it wasn't worth it mm -hmm. because there are so few people participating in this. And is there the possibility that there would be more students who would want to go than you would be able if to? If there is, then I will have to set up a protocol for um, deciding who would go. Generally, it's students that I have a lot of faith in. Mm -hmm. um, a surrogate parent for 12 teenagers in a foreign country for three weeks, and I need people I can count on mm -hmm. to do what's right. And that tends to be one of the big criteria. Um, David, are you the only adult that would go on this trip? Or will there be another adult with you? Oh, that's, that's a very nice compliment you make to me. Yes, I, I am an adult. And <laughs> <laughs> I don't always act that way, but yes, I will try and be adult-like, and I will be the only adult on the trip, yes. Okay. Okay. Um, we've just found in the past to go with a larger group and take a non-school person 
Um, it's just difficult. They don't quite understand how to proceed in something like this. You really need another teacher. So you and, couldn't train a school board member or anything? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm sorry, but probably not. <laughs> Does that change what, how you're going to vote? Has, <laughs> what if she has two daughters who are, are chomping at the bit <laughs> to go on this? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll have to think about that one. <laughs> okay, so I, I think we, we need a consensus um, from the board. Oh, I'm sorry. I, um, the deposit that you'll be taking from the interested students at this time would be totally refundable. Refundable. Yes, Do totally refundable. I just, I just want to have some initial monies so that if we do get approval on November 12th, um, November 13th or 14th, I could, I could send it on. So that money isn't going directly to the promotion company at this time? It's at, no, at this time I would hold it in an account in Cape Elizabeth. Okay. And if for some reason we're not going to make the trip, then I would obviously refund everything. Um, but if we are going to go forward with it, their request, the tour company has actually requested deposits earlier and I've told them I can't do it. So. David, is there uh, any plan to look into trip insurance? Uh, cancellation insurance? or Generally what we carry is health insurance, um, but I had not thought of looking into cancellation insurance. If I, you'd like me to, I always could. We, had, yeah, we did have an it. issue with a trip <laughs> last year, and that's why I raised that question. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I guess it would also be appropriate to say that when all is said and done, this school board is really authorizing the time off from the regular school and is not assuming on the part of the board or the school district financial responsibility mm -hmm. for anything that may happen in terms of trips being yes. canceled. Right. Mm -hmm. Good point. Yes, no, that's, that's an important. I and think I that think got that lost a little bit in very, discussion very last year. To yes. the parents involved. Mm -hmm. That the school board's function in this is to is to allow the students to miss to miss the school days and allow me to and miss so. right. those days that I won't be here and that's that's a very good point that I will be sure to make with um, all the parents at that time and and I could explore that and leave that as an option that if, if that's something they wished to another expense that they wish to incur they could mm -hmm. but just um, they need to be aware of those those parameters. Okay. Um, do we have a consensus from the board? We don't need to take an official vote, but yeah, I think not. any time yes. we can allow mm -hmm. these things to go on, it's great. Okay. So I think you're set. Thank you very much, and I'll be back November 13th. Correct? We're going to meet on Wednesday. 12th. Oh, the 12th. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Dave. Thanks, David. Okay. Um, that concludes our meeting for tonight, and I'd li like to just go over um, future meeting dates. Um, school board workshop, Tuesday, October 28th, uh, 7 o'clock, High School Library. Policy subcommittee, Tuesday, November 4th at 12 noon here in the Jordan Conference Room. Uh, next month's finance subcommittee, November 12th at 6.30, and the regular school board meeting will be Wednesday, November 12th at 7.30. Marie, I missed something in my report um, quickly. For related to pass, on January 15th, 2004, there was a meeting of principals. Um, I'm working on getting the details on that, the times and everything else. And on December 4th, there was an enrollment workshop for guidance counselors and uh, I would hope that all guidance counselors have the opportunity, both from the middle school and the high school, to attend that workshop. Um, and I will have details on that as well by next week for you. Thank you. Okay. Okay, then can we adjourn this meeting? We have a motion to adjourn? I move that we adjourn the meeting. Okay. Second. All in favor? Elaine, all in favor? Five, zero. Thank you.